right, so uh, basically I'm from uh, South Orange, New, New Jersey. Um, I was born in the same Bonaventure High School, I mean, uh, hospital in um, Livingston. Um, I have a, a sister, an older sister. She went to Hampton University. I have two parents. Um, I say my background is basketball. My dad played basketball. My mom cheerleaded for my dad, uh, St. Peter's Prep. Um, I want to say I went to South Orange Middle School as a middle schooler. I uh, went to Jefferson Elementary School, and then I went to Marshall School. So I was like my, so like Marshall, then Jefferson, then, middle, then South Orange Middle School. And uh, I want to say just like my background, basically, like you said, like I said, it was basketball. Like we, uh, my dad played ball, and my sister was the first one by the siblings to play basketball. And then I came along to play basketball. So that's basically like my background of basketball and how I grew up. Uh, so I don't, I, I, I want to say my cousin, like my second cousin played collegially. I don't know for sure, but they said they did. He played um, at North Carolina a and I want to say. So I don't, I don't know about that, but my dad did play basketball at a D3 college, Royal Island College. So he played there. Uh, my sister played up to her senior year in high school. So was, that's how my sister didn't play in college. Uh, I was always a kid that I just wanted to have fun, like anything that I would compete in. So like anything, like I'll say soccer. I feel like I was the best at soccer, football. I always, always wanted to play football. Um, like to like ping pong. I always thought I was the best at ping pong, like different sports. I, like anything I do, I just like, I just wanted to have fun. So like when I was young, I played baseball, soccer, and and then I did a little bit of basketball, but I, f I felt better with basketball than soccer and uh, baseball. Baseball was too a little bit too slow for me. <laughs> I saw this, but by basketball, I took over with basketball and I want to say the third grade, and that's why I just stuck to that sport. It was more of like, um, I want to say, I want to say like since my sister played basketball, I was always around basketball. So then I was in the, like my town is a baseball soccer town. So, but all the people I hung around and what people with my sister hung around, we always talk about was basketball. So I was just engrossed in the culture of basketball. So all I knew was basketball. So that's why I took more of a step to her as basketball than any other sport. Um, I want to say I don't I never really had like an NBA favorite like I just watched I always wanted just to watch a game and like like I'm not like I don't like oh yeah that's my favorite I never really had a favorite player but like I want to say actually I did have a favorite player but like he got injured I want to say Derrick Rose like was my favorite player out of all of them like he I had a jersey I always wore his sneakers I'll say him and then I'll say Russell Rushbrook but then I started growing on like other players like Damian Lillard CJ McCollum uh, Steph Curry, guys like that, um, just how versatile they are. But especially Derrick Rose was like the main one of the main guys I really first started watching. Uh, I'll say one of my greatest streams is um, scoring the ball. I'll say that. Um, I was always never really a scorer, so I just worked and worked on being a scorer. So now I feel like that's my strength in my game, but also particularly shooting shooting off the ball, I mean, shooting with, with the drip ball in my hand, uh, attacking the basket, um, finishing through contact. I said that's the strength of my game. I feel like that's the strength right now for my game. Uh, that, that, I feel like that's the strength of my game because it's like very, I, I've, done, I've done a lot of things, like do this, like blocks, and I feel like, like my main strength is like scoring the basketball. Um, I'll say right now when I measure myself, like with my shoes off, I'm like six two. With my sneakers off, I'm like six three. Um, I weigh almost one seventy, so I'm trying to get my weight up, just get ready, get stronger. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I say um, coming more with more energy to the floor. Um, I feel like sometimes I come in like like trying to assess the situation instead of coming with like this full energy and playing hard, uh, not putting as much pressure on myself, just enjoying the game. 
also uh, playing playing harder defense and the tone because I'm definitely I'm gonna be a point guard. So that's what I want to do: set the tone defensively as a leader. Um, also, want to keep. Well, also, like on the office event, I want to keep everything simple, trying to simplify my game. So, like at the next level, you're not gonna get certain things off that you might get off at, in in high school. So, I want to simplify my game and make it easier for me and more efficient. So, those like the things I'm really working on, and of course, my body and getting stronger. Um, I'll say uh, preparation. Preparation is key. Uh, all my mentors that helped me get to this point where I am always talking about preparation. It's everything that you do before the game that gets you to be successful in the game. So like preparation, I'll come out like, cause it's also more of like having as more of a mental thing of like, yeah, I'm coming in, I'm playing this team, but then if I come to this game, I'm playing this team. So like you have a different perspective on the game. So just coming in with the same attitude every time and being consistent. Um, I, I really don't know <laughs> because I never heard someone say underrated like that. Well, I feel like that doesn't get talked about is my versatility on the court. Uh, just I could, I could play both sides. I could be a theft from both sides. Uh, I could feel the stat sheet of being a, a better passer, uh, rebounding, everything that matters in that category. So I feel like it's not like I never say like underrated, but I feel like it's not talked about, but I feel like I, I, I can just do it and um, I can portray that at next like when I play at the next level and uh, further on games. Um, okay, so I would say um, I feel like, I, like I'm going to start with my weaknesses on defensive defensively. Um, I say I'm going to stop like gambling more because I feel like I use my athleticism too much. Like, oh, I'm going to get the steal. I'm going to try to get the steal. I'm going to try to jump. And try to block everything instead of being more smart about being on defense and getting it like probably getting lower on defense. I feel like um, guarding the ball uh, harder, talking uh, weak side defense. I feel like it got better over the years. So that's that's what I'm really working on with defense, especially with my high school, St. Peter's Prep and my AU team, Lightning. Uh, oh, I, I, I only asked that question one time. That was crazy. Um, I want to say, uh, I think about that one because I play so many guys, like talented guys, like it's like guys in Jersey, guys outside of Jersey. There's a whole bunch of talent in class of 2022 I played against. I wouldn't say like um, the toughest, like because everybody I play with, I feel like they're not everyone is different on their own levels. Like one guy might be good at this, might be fast and quick. I got to guard him different. And another guy might be oh, stronger than me. I got to back up. I got to play smarter. So I feel like it's not, I can't say any names. Like, I don't know any names that like, that's really hard to guard. But like, I feel like this has been tough matchups that I had that have been who was like, yeah, that guy's good. You know what I'm saying? So like, I feel like um, that it's not like any names that like one particular guy, but I feel like there's guys out there that I've played against that are very competitive and know how to play the game. Like, especially in the state, like guys like um, like who I played, Burton Calf, like Will, Will Richardson. I played um, Ben Roy from Man and Squad. I played Jaden Pierre, which is at Lou High right now. I played against uh, Elijah Perkins, Jay Kwan that committed to Seton Hall. Um, a whole bunch of guys who else? Uh, I could say um, let's see, Elijah Perkins. I played for Rainey. Um, Zion Cruz, I played against him. Like all those guys are different in their own ways. And I played against them. We all went at it. It was a great game. And it's like crazy how like we're all growing up. Like we all played together against each other when we was younger and how we're all growing up in high school and being one of the top, all the top kids in, in the state. So those like, those are like some of the names I'll say that I played against that were like, it was good. Like, yo, these guys are good. Uh, I want to say model my game. I might take bits and pieces of like guys like I see in the in the league, or like I might even see somebody. I might even see a person like so called that like you always say that is like oh not top level if the move. If I like the move, I'm gonna take the move. Like I like my my teachers and like all the people that have helped me to get to the point I'm at is 
you always be a student of the game. So like, even from a person that you feel like, oh, he might not be this guy, but hey, that move is like, tough. You can use that move. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna stay that move. You can always be a sponge and learn from different people. You, it doesn't matter who they are. So I'll say, I'm gonna say, like who I say, CJ McCollum. I'll say for that example, uh, he has like like this footwork is is crazy. Like his footwork is serious. So like like the moves that he makes to change his direction, his floater. I'll say I, I'll probably take a little bit of that. Um, Dame his quick release, uh, how he gets separation off the defender, a whole whole bunch of stuff. Guys like Steph Curry, how he runs off screens, moves without the ball. Um, was I say like even guys from like guys I even played against like God take I took some moves from guys that I even played against um I forgot I forgot the guy's name he did a move I saw on a on a video against our team and he did it I'm like that's a nice move and I took it because I felt, I felt like it was a nice move I could put that in my back that's what so I feel like that's that's my my strength too also is like being a student of the game and put my ego to side and just learning and taking the information. This the culture in there is um I feel like basketball is basketball. So like wherever you go, you still gotta perform, you still gotta play, you still gotta get along with the guys on your team. So I would say it's just it's it's not different. It's different cultures from everywhere. Everyone comes from different places, but we all put that aside and know we, we know we gotta focus on one main goal. So I feel like the coach is the coach is definitely different from especially and it's like it's funny, like New York and Jersey is right there. But it's totally like you're in a whole different world when you hang around these guys in New York and then you come back to where you live is a totally different culture, especially with that because of the city life and you go back to like a more suburban urban city life is it's very different. But I feel like where it's I don't really see it as much because we're all so engrossed and focused on basketball. I don't really don't see it that much, but it's good to see different cultures and it's good to see different cultures. You learn different things. Uh, you 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 start appreciating things that uh, that come to you. Um, you build your connections, so it, it's good. Um, I'll say short term goal is. Um, I feel like I fulfill my short term goal. Like my short term goal, my, I feel like my long term goal when I first came into high school was I wanted to try to get a, a Division One look. And once I got a visual, I felt like I was good. And then offers started coming in. So then that my goal was changed. And then my uh, now my short-term goal now is I I don't know really like a short-term goal, but I feel like one of my goals are like is to make a like a, a impact when I come in as a freshman. I feel like that's one of my goals. I know I have to work for it. Uh so I feel like those are one of my goals coming in. Uh that's probably like that's my short-term goal. Also, another short-term goal off the court is trying to um even though I'm a, like I'm, I'm doing well in school, probably even being a better student, uh, I feel like that's one of my uh, short term goals too. Is trying to graduate in the top of my class. So that's that's what I'm, that's my my two short term goals. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I got first honors. I was going to say uh, first marking period, second marking period. I think I got like second honors. I'm going to say, and then this third marking period, I had first honors. So I'm going to try to keep my first honors this fourth quarter. So it's going to be going to be tough. So, but it's going to be good. Those so I'm up for the challenge. Uh, I say long term goals. I don't really, I, I still have to sit down and talk to my parents and like other guys that, that help me get to my goals about my long-term goal. I really don't have like long-term goals now because I still haven't sat down and thought about it because I was so focused on my short-term goals. So I haven't really thought about my long-term goals yet. So like I was have to get back to that. um just relax uh, relax have a good time enjoy the moment uh we're blessed to be in this situation everyone gets this opportunity um just i uh, collide um cooperate with, with the guys the team having a great time with each other because we want to get this we want to get this chance one time so let's let's make the best out of it and i'm just yeah i've been just having fun like 
Like if, I, if I'm going to be with you guys every day, I'm going to practice with you guys and play ball with you guys. Miles have a best relationship off the court. Uh, I'll say um, just the connection I had with Coach with Coach Wright, uh, Coach Nardi. Those, that that was the big thing. So that was the major. That's good. <laughs> Sorry, that. <laughs> but I feel like the uh, major that was the most important factor was the um, connection I had with the coaches. Um, they reached out to me. It was like different types of conversations. So I felt like we're going somewhere different than just, oh, I'm trying to get you to come to my school. I was on a whole different level than other than basketball, trying to be a better man. So it was different conversations like that. That was like, okay, this is a different type of situation and show the culture of the school, of the team and the community around of, of Villanova. And I want to say, um, just uh, just like it, and it, those probably made the main factors. I want to say. Uh, I want to say it wasn't challenging. I was always taught like, if the situation comes, I try to figure out the best way to, to use to utilize it and work it to your favor. So. When the quarantine hit, basically, I was just like, okay, I know what I, I had offers on the table before the quarantine hit. And I was just like, yo, I'm just going to get in the gym, which I get better and better and better. Just get in the gym, just working, just working, just working in my household, just working. And like coaches started calling coaches. I'm like, where do these coaches come from? And like, I, would, I didn't even expect this would have happened. And like coaches started calling and then they started becoming more interested. We started building relationships. So I feel like it wasn't challenging. It, it was like we were just um, making the best of the situation. It's, it's crazy, like all the hard work I put in. It's just crazy that it's coming to fruition. And like, it's just, it's crazy. Like, I feel like the other day I was just watching Villanova playing against North Carolina in the championship game. And Chris Jenkins hits that shot. Cause I was like right there on my couch, just watching the game. And it was just crazy. Now I'm talking to coach. And then we go from talking to coach, right? To, or oh, we're actually going to Villanova. It's just, it's just insane. And like the attention, it, the attention, it, it doesn't, I feel like it doesn't get to me. I feel like it, it's going to happen because you, you're going to a nationally scale school. So it's going to happen. I'll fo I feel like my focus is now to, take the attention but also zone it out and also um use it and uh block it out and be humble about it and be like see where i got here now let now let's go to the next step wow processing that we made a big step in in my life i would say my parents and my two head coach uh, my two coaches coach dana and coach Marabo, it was like the four people that that were really helping me through the process. Of course, I have my other my trainers, uh, like Coach P, Coach Phil, um, Coach Brandon, Coach Al, like uh, all my other coaches. I have so many coaches out there that helped me get to this point. But like, I feel like those are the main four people that helped me through this process. Um, I didn't let it, I, and also I feel like I didn't I didn't let it overwhelm me. So if I had like a problem, I would ask questions. This. So I feel like that that was good about the process, and but those four those are the four main people that were helping me in this situation. Uh, just um, what my parents and they and what they told me was be patient. The um, the what's gonna what's important is gonna reveal itself at the right time. So I feel like when I committed to Villanova, I feel like it. Commit, it like revealed itself at its right time. So that, that's, what was, that's what was good about the situation. Um, I would say um, I definitely had a more connection to the program than any other program. I've been to, I've been to plenty of games. I've been to their locker room twice. I got to meet the whole coaching staff. Um, it's just, it's just amazing culture. Um, like their their biggest thing is attitude, and I love that. Like that's one thing that very sticks out. It's not even about basketball. It's just about being a better man, and that will help you being better on the court. Which is attitude, um, playing for others, um, just just those type of um, what was those what was those called like um, 
I want to say it's key terms that will help you in life, just life in general. So I feel like that's what stuck out to me because that's what my dad always taught me was be a better man, have a better attitude, um, just stay focused, have your goals, have your own expectations, and everything will figure itself out, especially in the, in the game will come easier once you have those goals down. Uh, the message was just um, just being a uh, coming in and being a point guard, uh, being one of the a, a great uh, Villanova point guard that they had in the past years. Just being a great point guard, a great leader, and found other 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 great like point guards like that came through like Colin Gillespie, um, Archie Diakono, Jalen Brunson, uh, Corey Fisher, all those guys that came through, and just being a great model of those and being part of that legacy of guards. Oh, oh, of course, like the course, right? And like the coaching staff they have is is amazing in development. Like what they turn, like like I said, like for example, Colin, Colin Gillespie, you take a kid that um, that was a three star um, that no one like so called didn't know about, and he comes in, works his butt off, and he now he's the cold biggest player of the year just because of him believing in the system. Uh, listening to Coach Ray and also working uh, working hard on his on his end and everything else will figure it out and buying into the process. <clears throat> it was uh, he he was excited and I was excited that he was excited, <laughs> like he was very excited that oh he's gonna be the next good uh, uh Villanova guard, and also one thing I felt like like it was great about was that. We all know it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long journey, but a good one, and it's going to be a lot of ups and downs, and so it's going to be. I'm gonna have fun, and it's just, it's, we're, we're just excited. We're, we're both excited. Even Coach Nardi was excited, so I'm, I'm thankful to be in this position. Um, I knew Trey Patterson. Um, I always talked to Trey. I knew Trey since we was younger. So that I, I knew him, but um, now since I committed, I got a bunch of texts from uh, the, uh, Villanova players and it just shows the culture and like the legacy these guys have and the bond these guys have with each other. And I, and I just felt the love. I felt like I was on the team when they, when not, when they texted me. So I was like, that's great. And like, I feel the support. I say my focus is, like I said, when I said it before, was uh, getting my body stronger. Those are, that's the main thing. Uh, second thing is keep up, simplifying my game um, to like two or three moves, uh, being more uh, efficient. And then the third thing is uh, being uh, hard, grit, playing hard, uh, coming with energy and playing defense. Those are the really three things I'm focusing on getting ready for college. Um, just the way they play together. Uh, I like playing my teammates. Um, I want to be uh, like unselfishness, the big thing in Villanova's offense. Uh, I want to say um, just the way they play together, the way they talk on defense. Um, I feel like anyone can flourish in this system because of them coming together and everyone playing for each other. And success. I would say success is... Ooh, that's a that's a different question. That's a it's like I like I feel like I heard that question before, but it's not in the same words. But um, success, I would say that's that's a hard. I got to think about that one because success it could be in different ways. Like people would think you could put success into oh I'm making the NBA. That's that could be your success. Your success be having a great college career and then being the best business partner. That could be your success. Success can be people making a lot of money. So as well, how I portray it is like, um, what, like if I fulfill my expectations and if, at the end of the day, if I fulfill my expectations and do what I had to do and getting better every day, I feel like that's success. Cause we're not, you're not going to achieve success if you don't do the things, you, the things you have to do daily and the little things you have to do daily. So I feel like that's what success is to me. Or, or successful. 
Um, I want to say just winning. Winning is a big thing. That's what, that's what we come together as a team for is the win. That's all, that's what all everything is about recruiting, bringing the right players in, coaches, uh, University of Villanova itself. Everything's about winning. That's why we made these teams to, to win, to come together, bond as a team. So I feel like that's that's what makes me feel satisfied. And also just playing playing and leaving everything out on the court. Like if I if I felt like I've done everything I could to win this game, or we could have we lost, but I felt like we did everything we could to win the game and we lost, I'm good. I'm satisfied, even though we still gotta work harder and get to the places we have to go. And that's like part of getting better every day. I feel like um, our generation is it's not like we're, we we don't want to win. I feel like we do want to win. It's just that so many things are going on at one time. Like, even if you lose and you have 30 points, it's going to be blasted up on social media. And then if you lose and if you win and then you have like 10 points, it, they don't really hype it up as much. So I feel like it's the strength of it's not like the, I feel like it's the strength of like social media, but portraying a certain image. But maybe the kid is sad that he lost. It's just that on social media, it looks like he's up because he just had 30, but they lost. But I feel like I, I know a bunch of guys that I've, that had 30 in the game that's that rarely got that were mad that we lost. Like we lost to Brain Catholic in the state finals. I had a great game, but we lost. I wanted to win the state for a chip and I felt bad for the seniors. So that those things come into consideration. So I feel like we still have that competitive edge in in our generation. It's like is your success and like what are you satisfied about? And it's also right. about like what you're going for, like and like what's your why. So like if if I'm playing basketball, like what's your why? Like what's your reason why you're playing basketball? And I'll always I'll always keep that question in mind because once you don't, because what like it's no point of doing something if you don't know your why, because you're not doing you're doing it for no reason. So that's always keep that because once because like I could be playing basketball like like what like what you call it, like my dad always said if you get to a point in basketball and you're not having fun or like you're not doing this or you don't have a why what's the point of you playing anymore you know what I'm saying so like that's that's why you always keep those questions in your mind and those goals and those uh like you said those success and what you're striving for and your expectations. Smartest purchase? Yep. Smartest purchase. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, smartest purchase, I would say, is um, I'm trying to think because I don't, I don't be paying sometimes. Like, like my dad, my dad bought. I feel like since he bought it, because we were both gonna read it, but I feel like the purchase that I, like my dad feel like I was smart was um, he bought Jay Wright's book. Coach Jay Wright's book, uh, Attitude. That's just that's a very smart purchase. Um, my dad always talks about um, having an um, entrepreneur's mentality, not having a consumer's mentality. So things like so like I might be hesitant on buying like sneakers, this that another, because you could do something else with that money. Having like a different type of mentality, like doing something, paying for something that could benefit you in the long run, having equity in it. That's what big my dad always used to tell me and um I would say uh, that was probably my like it's not me buying it but my dad bought it so I feel like that was like as a family the smartest purchase we made um he always talks about real estate that's like having real estate is very important so things like that just having buying things that have equity in it uh I say my favorite book uh I read um I want to say uh, Lord of the Flies I read in school. And then I want to say Malcolm X. Those are my two like favorite books, I would say. Um, the reason why Lord of the Flies, I like that book, it's just very action-packed. Um, I feel like we, as, as young kids, we all could connect. Like, because that could be a reasonable situation if we were in that type of situation. Probably not how it went down, but like, I feel like it, it we could connect to it and it shows like different attributes and like even like basketball, like we said ball is life. Like you could connect basketball to any of that, especially that situation of in the group of having a leader, um, chaos going on in the group. Um, 
being too young, it's like we want to grow up so fast, but you could tell that kids are very young at a young age and we need to learn a lot more to be in that type of situation survival so like it learn it teaches you different things that we well we that since we're not in that situation but we can learn from those type of situations from reading the book and i'll say malcolm x just um since it's like it, it's a it's a um non-fiction book it's like you can like connect to it and how he grew up as a kid in um in that type of era and like we all know like that type of era was, was crazy and how what he saw and what he went through is like, yo, like you can learn, you can pick different things and put them in different situations and it will go and help you with your mind and you know, like your spirit and then bring you together. Most embarrassing moment? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I wanna say, I don't really have any like embarrassing moments. I just have moments that I can learn from. Like, um, like I had a game winner scored on me and it was posted all on Instagram. But I, I feel like I wasn't an embarrassment. I was like, hey, you scored on me. I got to play better defense. That's how I took it. I didn't care if it was all over here, over here. Had people calling me, texting me, sending me the video. I was like, hey, you scored. It was a good bucket. It was a good score. So I feel like that's probably, that was an embarrassment, but I learned a lot from that situation of how the, uh, the power of social media, um, the power. I, like, I learned so many things. Uh, I learned things about myself. I, um, my confidence in myself being in that situation regarding the last second shot of knowing what to do the next time. So I learned so many things, but I don't feel like that was the most, I don't, that was an embarrassing moment. Uh, I want to say uh, my biggest moment, I feel like we want, I did, I had a game winner. Uh, I had a game winner against Hudson Catholic. I felt like that really changed my life. <laughs> like with St. Peter's Prep and all that, that was our first win in six years. When I hit that, I was a freshman. It was a crazy shot. And like, I was on, I think I was on like uh, winter break when I hit that shot. It was crazy. Like the gym went crazy. But like, I feel like I was like my greatest moment. And I feel like the second greatest moment I had was uh, we played, um, I had a lot of great moments in basketball, but I feel like this is my second greatest moment. We played uh, uh, St. Joe's Montville. I had like 14 points in a, in a row in the fourth quarter and we wanted to get to the state championship like I, I put everything into that game so I feel like that was like those are my two favorite my two greatest moments in high school um I don't really have a pet peeve like um I'm trying to think I don't really have a pet peeve. Like I don't have pet peeves. Like <laughs> that's weird. That's actually a weird question. But I don't. I don't. I don't know. I never really thought like a pet peeve. Like things that my friends do it. I don't know. I'm like, oh, you're annoying, bro. Or, like this, that, and that. But it's not really a pet peeve. I just be saying that. So I don't really have like pet peeves. Things don't really bother me. Like things don't like bother me unless like it's like repetitive. I just be like, yo, chill. Like relax. So like this time. But like things really don't bother me. <laughs> oh no! I say. I say one thing. My big, I say like it really bothers me. Like if I like, like when I'm working out or something like that. Like if I like if I had missed a shot, and but you know like you met you met like two in a row. You like hit three in a row. You miss a shot and like, and then like people say yo yo you gotta do this that like yo I I missed one shot. I got it. I got it. I feel like yo like okay I got it. I got it. But you like like I say you gotta be open to criticism. Like I said before. So I so I, like I don't get bothered by that because everyone's gonna say something. You always gonna have uh criticism so that's I feel, but like that that's one thing i'm like yo like yeah okay i missed one shot i got, got you I, I know the like my basics but yeah that, that's one thing i wanted to do. i'll gotcha. say one thing i'll say one thing if like if i'm like one thing i don't like is like when i'm relaxing i like i'm doing like i'm in a mode if i'm like sitting back like this so like just watching tv and someone just comes down their way and just says like a random thing like just asks me to do something i'm like where's this even come from like like we was just talking about something else, like, like that doesn't add up. Like they go from this to that quick. Like let me settle down, I'm relaxing. Like that, that's that's one thing I'm like, yo. Uh, my dad, uh, that biggest influence. Um, I'll say just from him, just working hard. Like everything was about working hard. Um, he gets on me a lot. Uh, he's tough love, but is it my dad? 
because uh, I see what he does to get me better and like how he provides for the family and how like he he gets up in the morning, goes to work, comes off. He drives me everywhere to work out, this, that, and that, getting my schedule set for basketball, seeing what I have, interviews, and it's like, yo, like, this is like, wow, like, he's doing this for me. I feel like that's my biggest role model, and him, and then I have my family, like, my mom, my sister, and on top of that, and the people that come into my life that I want, that help me out, like, my all, like, all my basketball trainers, they, they're, like, the spin it, like, the spin it image of my dad, and, like, they have the same attitude, and like it's crazy how people come in your life for a reason. So, like my dad especially is my is my biggest role model. Uh, my worth of it, I would say, because I I was I was like always had always had like like I was always fast, always wanted to run, like to jump. I was like the like to do stuff, and I always thought it was fun to do it. But I always relied on my hard work of like yo. Like, that's why, I, like, sometimes, we, you, you, like, I feel like people think I might get frustrated, but I know I could do it because I put so much time into doing it that I want this result. Like, I've been working on my jump shot, my dribble. So, like, if I mess up on, like, a little thing, like, I could be playing pickup pick up basketball, and I, I might, like, lose the ball. But I might be like, yo, Mark, like, why are you doing that? Because I know I put so much work and time into this game and so much, like, I do this for a reason. So, if I, this happens, like, why is this happening? And I feel like I should get back in the gym. I said, I gotta re, re, retool up, retool up, retool up. Just keep working, keep working. Um, a lot of people I look up to. Um, my dad, I said, uh, my mom, my grandparents, I look up to just on how we came together as a family. I have a beautiful family. Um, we, we all cooperate with each other. Um, I feel like I'm blessed to be in a situation with my family because not everyone has the best feeling in the situation. So I'm truly blessed to have my, my good family situation, a great support system. Uh, I look up to all the coaches that came in my life. Like I say, Coach Pete, um, Coach Phil, um, Coach Haas, um, Coach Barry, like so many coaches. I, I can't even name them all. Like those are like four guys I can say off the top of my head, but like those are the like guys I look up to. Like I can call like, hey, uncle, let me let me do this. Let me do that. I need help with this. So like those, those are the those are the guys that I look up to. Uh I sat the bench. <laughs> Actually, I sat the bench um my seventh grade year, AAU. Um I, I saw everything in one thing, the politics, um, playing time, um just everything I felt I saw everything that could go wrong happen to me in that situation and like and I felt like that shaped me into who I am and just getting my mental very strong seeing for what it is and not getting mad not getting emotional but being strategic about it and just working and getting in the gym and that's how I came that's how I got my grit and like just I just want to get in the gym like I just want to be in the gym am I worried about this am I worried about that and that's what that's the times I always come back to is like, yo, I was always that kid. I was on the bench. I'm not, I like, I'm gonna keep working. I'm gonna keep working. Cause this could be me again in any second. Um, I feel like I responded great. Um, just um just going through like always the kid, or so-called the kid, always getting in trouble in school, getting in trouble with my dad, with my parents doing this, just just uh, being myself, but not knowing how to control myself. But I feel like I, I handled it well, um, just cor correcting my mistakes and just keep moving forward, keep moving forward and being the positive about the situation. Because whatever situation I am, I'm here for a reason and I have to work through it. And if if it's a good situation, hey, let's go. But I'm, it's, it's going to get bumpy again. I mean, you're going to have to fight through it because it's always going to be a it's always going to be a bump in a road as you go up as you go up in life, so. <laughs> That's funny, because my friend, we just talked, like, it's funny, my friend was just talking about, like, what would you be at first? I made a joke that I said I was going to get, like, some, uh, I think I said, I forgot what I said. I was going to get something funny, but he was like, he's like, oh, seriously, like, what would you get? But um, I would say um, something, like, that I can do, 10 mil, so I would say, First, like, if I was in this fortune, I would say I would go to I would go to my parents and ask them a question. Like, 
A, like, what should I do? I just got $10 million in my bank account. What should I do? Because I said, I'm a kid. I never had $10 million in my bank account. Because, you know, when you get Christmas, when you get like Christmas money, you want to spend it on something else. That's what also all kids want to do, but that's a different type of um, thinking. And like, I would, that's what, that's the thing that I have to start developing when I like, when, like, when you get to that level, even like if it's basketball, you're working for, you're working like with a company, entrepreneurism, anything, just having that type of like uh, that uh, type of mentality of like, if I get this, how much I can make this? Like, if I get a mil, I can make it 10 mil. If I get 10 mil, I can make it a hundred mil. So uh, that's a hard question, but I feel like, my first purchase would be something that I can make money back off of. So like, um, I'll probably invest in something that that's that's going up. Like, probably invest. I don't know what to invest in, but I'll probably invest in something. Uh, get a get a nice house, not too expensive house. Get a nice house. Like if I was like at the right age, I get a nice house, and not even buy a car because cars are not really. Like I, like me, and my parents always talked. I was like, "Are you gonna? We think about this car. We think about that car." Because I'm, I like cars, but I feel like we always talked about leasing cars. That's the best investment where you don't have, you're not gonna be driving like that much. So how about you get like a leasing car, especially with ten million dollars, and then you put it, you put some of that millions of dollars into something, and you, that money is just growing, and you're not wasting all your money on a car. You're just leasing it, and then you just have money flowing in different ways, and you're not wasting your money. Uh, I don't have a dream car, but like I like like a bunch of cars, like because my dad was a, a car guy. So like I'll say, like even from like to like I'll say, like from the top of the top, like Bugattis, McLarens, uh, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, uh, Rolls Royces, Bentleys, to Mercedes, BMWs, Maseratis. Um, um, I was, what was like I like like Infinities, like a Lexus, like they got a bunch of those type of cars out there that like yo, dude, that's a tough car. Like even Honda, like I was like even Honda like has some cars and Toyota has some cars out there that like they they like change up and make like a special edition on them. Like yo, this car is this much and it's a Toyota. So like different cars like that. And I'm like oh, that car is nice. Like I don't care about the name. I care about like what the car is, like the material of the car. The, uh, um, what, what what they do to make like what was the purpose of the car being made why are you making that car why is this this much the different things that go into the car like anything like like with sneakers clothes anything that's expensive like oh yeah why am i paying a thousand dollars for a shirt is a reason why i'm paying a thousand dollars for a shirt i'm not just gonna pay a thousand dollars because there's a name on it i was watching a video my dad sent to me about robin rob Grabowski and how he he bought, he didn't use none of his nfl money to buy anything he was like i like can't buy a car he got like a nice house like he's a simple guy i don't need this and he said have my money growing and i got out and bought me a nice tennis chain a diamond tennis chain and it was like it looked like, like ten thousand dollars for a ten tennis chain because it's diamonds and i was like i'm good i don't need a car i don't need this but like it's funny how people have their different philosophies i'm um, just being with my friends enjoying life like that's like the main thing I'm like that's what I'm passionate about just being being happy doing what I love to do if that's going outside playing in the park and going on the swings to I'm inside reading a book or I'm doing go-karts or I'm at Six Flags or I'm just sitting down even meditating or watching tv or watching the championship game just something that that game that's fun that's happy that's like very calm that's relaxing my mind anything that's relaxing my mind and uh, that takes my mind off something that I feel like that's stressing me out or like not even stressing me out, like just, I feel like that's business. I'm separating business from fun. And I just want to get away from that and just having a good time, even like going on vacation or something like that. That's what I feel like. I'm Just anything that just, just helps like relax your body and, ha and like really enjoy the fruits of your labor. Now, no. I don't I don't really play video. I don't, I don't, it's funny. I don't really play video games. My friends always make fun of me. I don't really play video games. I, just, I can really just sit down and watch YouTube videos all day. Like literally so watch YouTube videos, eat some food, and watch some TV, watch some basketball, be in the phone with my friends all day. Just something, something like that, just relaxing. Because half the time I'm playing basketball doing homework. So that's just my relaxed time. 
like I say, like this is my favorite. Like, like, like on a Friday, if like nothing's going on outside with my friends, I'll probably come in the house, get some like good food, get like a nice snack, a dessert, watch something, watch like my favorite movie, and I'm good. Or late, or I'll do that, or I'll just go in the house and be on the phone with my friends and just be all over IG, bug out, just have fun. That's we we find that's one thing about one thing I like about my friends and my peer group is that we find anything that's fun. So like we go to this situation, we're gonna make it fun. If we go to this situation, make it funny. If we go outside and there's no one out there, we're gonna make it fun just by ourselves. <laughs> like like that's one thing I feel like that's good about us. We can make anything enjoyable and just enjoy it. Um, the show I was watching like, over quarantine, like when we first hit quarantine, like COVID, I was watching um, Arrow. It's a good series. I, I, I love that series. Arrow, I was so engrossed into that. Like, cause I was never really a shows person. I was like, let me just try it out. Cause Arrow, like it's an action pack. So I'm just gonna watch it. And I was watching, I was like, this is good. <laughs> it's good. It got, it got a lot at the end because it started going to like, cause like, I feel like I like the beginning better because it was more of realistic. Like it was real more realistic and then it started getting like more fiction. So, but it started off being more realistic, realistic, so. I'll just say, um, I can't, I can't choose my path, I would say. I would say, I will figure out as it goes through of like, what do I need to do to be better myself in this situation? Cause like, the, like, the, like if I was a pro or anything, like the NBA career is very unpredictable. Like you don't know when, when you're going to leave the team, none of that. So you gotta, you gotta be focused every day. I know what you want to do and what's your expectations, your goals. So you don't get lost in the mix and the chaos. I feel like I, I want to get into like finance and business. So I, we're going to meet my parents and my family will start sitting down and like other people that we know about finance that want, we want to sit down and like talk about it and like financial literacy and stuff like that. So I'm going to start getting into that. Um, outgoing, intelligent, uh, thinking, and uh, active. That's, that's me. I'll say, I'll say outgoing. Um, I talk to everybody. Um, I, if I see you, I'm gonna say hello. If I know you, I'm gonna say hello. If you come up to me, I'm gonna talk to you. Um, intelligent. I would say this. Um, I was. I said thinking, right? Or intelligent first. I said intelligent mm -hmm. first. Right? Thinking. I say thinking because I think things through. Sometimes my dad says I overthink things, but like I think things through. Why am I doing it? intelligent just because based off like my thought process and it's not like i'll say it's like like common sense i'll say by that's what i mean by like intelligence of like what's your actions like what's your choices are you making good decisions uh what are you doing to better your mind so i feel like that's what i say by intelligence and then i'll say uh, uh active i like to have fun like like let's let's get it on that's me like let's go <laughs> what you want to do <laughs> you know what i'm saying so that that's that's me I'm, that's why i said active um everyone has their own path that would be my type everyone has their own path because i feel like like whatever you like whatever you do whatever you're going to like no situation is better in someone's situation. Like I'll say, if I'm going to Villanova and so and so is going to here, he might end up in a better situation than me. And I'm going to Villanova. Everyone has their own path, and I might be wanting to do something else, and I might go left. So I just want to say, everyone has their own path, and don't look at someone else's path and say, "Oh, he's better than me. I got to go to his way." No, stay on your course and see what's going on around you. And like I said, know your expectations. So that's why I say everyone has their own path. Cause I'm, I'm a late boomer. Everyone has their, like some people are the early boomers. Oh, he's nice at fifth grade. I ain't, well, I, I didn't get noticed until I was a freshman in high school. Some people are not even gonna get noticed until they're in college. So it's like different paths and no one's path is better than someone else's. It's just when you pop and when do you, when do you wanna, uh, what do you wanna do and what's your focus on? Uh, but I want to be member for just a guy 
that put in hard work to get to where he's at. And no matter where he's at, to put, put in hard work, build his connections, um, be a great people's person, giving back to the community, just being a great person overall. That's what I want to be remembered as and have a respect from everyone around the world. 